So remember that thing called the pandemic? I know a lot of you guys like didn't really have a pandemic, but in other parts of the world, there actually was one. And when lockdown started, I was in Los Angeles, California, and I had been dumped by my boyfriend. I had lost my job, and I was really, really hating my life. So I spent a few months just like streaming Netflix and drinking too much wine, and eventually ended up down a rabbit hole of like homesteading videos on YouTube. Did anybody else do this? Okay. okay. So canning vegetables, making tiny houses, biggest little farm, <laughs> so on and so forth. And I got it in my head that the life change that I really needed was to become a farmer. <laughs> so I find a website called Woofing, and it's not what it sounds like, it's not a fetish site. It's the worldwide organization of organic farms, and it's like Tinder for farmers. <laughs> farm has a profile and you have a profile and you convince them why you're going to be a good farmer and they invite you to stay and you work for free in exchange for room and board. Now most of the people using this site are like 20 something year old gap year kids who smoke a lot of weed and like don't do much work but me the 40 something year old midlife crisis existential disaster decides to apply for a llama farm in Southern California. And I'm scrolling through the photos, and there's dozens of pictures of like those dopey faced llamas, and Tiger King is on. I'm like, I'm gonna be a llama queen, I'm gonna be famous. This is my calling, it became my life purpose to go to this llama farm. So the name of the farm is Long Look Ranch. They accept me to come and live on the farm. So I show up at the farm, and I'm like living in a trailer. And my job is to like do chores and like feed carrots to llamas and things like that. But like I have this like fantasy of like really like the llamas like run towards me and be embraced, right? And like I don't want to just like feed them. Like I want them to love me. I have a hole. I'm a llama shaped hole in my heart, right? That I like need them to love me. So the owner like introduces me to like the patriarch, this like Larry Llama, right? And like tells me the origin story of how the llama farm came to be. So he had a regular farm, not a llama farm, back in the day. And one of his friends, she had a llama as a pet and she needed to move and the new apartment wouldn't take the llama. And so she dropped the llama off and he was left to care for this foster llama. And so the llama's acting all crazy and weird when it gets to the farm. And like llamas are crazy. They have three stomachs. One of the stomachs is just to throw up on you if they don't like it. Like for real. The other one is to like spit on you, but whatever. So the llama's acting really, really crazy and it's like aggro and unhinged. So he calls the vet and he's like, I think something's wrong with the llama. So the vet comes and he's like, oh, your llama has berserk syndrome. <laughs> and he's like, no, for real, like what's wrong with the llama? He's like, no, this is a syndrome that some single male llamas get, <laughs> sounds true to life, where they're like berserk, because they don't have a lady llama. So you need to go get a lady llama for this llama. And he's like, are you kidding me right now? So he goes on Craigslist and he finds a lady that has lady llamas a couple hours away. And he rents a trailer and he drives there to get a lady llama for, for berserk llama. Okay, so he drives to the farm, right? And he gets there and there's like these workers and they don't speak English and he's trying to like give hand signals about the lady llama that he wants for berserk llama and, and they bring over a lady llama and behind the lady llama is like a baby llama and he's like no no just the lady not the baby but they're communicating in hand signals like this is her baby you can't not take her baby so he's loading lady llama into the trailer and then the baby llama and then another baby llama and he's like no you don't understand like just lady llama anyway like two more llamas later they're all in the trailer he hooks it up closes the door he's driving back to his property and he's about halfway there and he hears a commotion in the back of the trailer. I mean, there's like thumping and all kinds of stuff. He pulls over and he opens the door and Lady Llama has now given birth in the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> On the way to Berserk Llama, right? 
So he pulls in at like 3 a.m. with like, you know, 40 llamas now in the train. <laughs> and puts them in the pen with Berserk Llama. And Berserk Llama goes crazy, but like in the best way. He's so stoked, right? Because he just got a lady and like a whole family and like one delivery. He's like so happy, right? Okay. So long story short, I live with Berserk Llama and the family of llamas on the farm for like a month. And like, I still want them to love me, and they're still kind of like, you know, like when they see me, and they're not convinced I'm a real farmer, even though like I got the overalls, I'm like doing the farming thing. And so it's like the day before that I'm about to leave, and all of a sudden, I hear this commotion outside the RV. There's like thumping, and there's like all kinds of stuff happening, and flashlights, and I go out, right? And the lady llama had another baby. <laughs> and I like ran in, I grabbed the baby and I hugged the baby and I got the selfie. I got the woofing selfie that I wanted of me embracing this baby llama and becoming a real farmer. Thank you. Give it up for Gabrielle one more time. Woo! If there's one thing we learned today, Save the drama for your llama. <laughs>